When I made my video about the dog heads the other day, I pointed out that the medieval mind, the medieval outlook on what a person is, may not have been as primitive as you might think it would have been if you strip away the way these people believed that there were strange mythical creatures living beyond the horizon in the unknown parts of the world, and if you kind of translate their religious biased language using terms such as soul, if you strip that away and if you translate that into more easily recognizable modern terms, then their outlook wasn't actually that primitive. And the example that I brought up in that video was, well, let's look at where our technology is going to lead in the maybe not even that distant future, we are going to have machines that lead, reach a level of intelligence and a level of self-awareness that will lead us to the inevitable conclusion that we can no longer treat those entities, those individuals, as mere machines, but we have to start treating them as self-aware, intelligent, and as a result, as persons. But once we get to that point, once we start realizing that we do need to treat certain machines as persons, once we get to that level of artificial intelligence and mechanical self-awareness, then we have a problem, don't we? Because now, what does it take for something to qualify being called a person? It's not so simple anymore. Up until now, we could simply say, well, it has to be a human being. If it isn't a human being, by definition, it isn't a person. We didn't have to worry about grey areas here, because any grey areas that would have existed, that would have made it difficult to distinguish a human being from a whatever it is, a not a human being, would have been in the deep evolutionary past all dead not for us to worry about so but now we do have to worry about this so the simple criterion that we are used to to say it has to be a human being can no longer apply so what then can we apply and you might think that there are easy answers to this you might say well in order to qualify for being called a person, a being, an individual, needs to be self-aware, intelligent, name a couple of other um, attributes that you can think of. But the sad thing is that you can think of individuals that we would now, without hesitation, Call human call persons because they are human beings. According to those new criteria, we would have to not call them persons. Now, clearly, that is not an acceptable definition of what a person is. But then, what have we got left? Do we have to start thinking about things such as, say, for example, a human being? is by definition a person because, in general, human beings have the capacity, the potential, to be intelligent and self-aware and so on and so forth. But, like I said, it's easy for us to do this now because we have defined a human being by definition to be a person, but once that is no longer a distinguishing factor for us, well, our other categories are going to fall down. How are we even going to begin categorizing machines into those that could potentially be intelligent and self-aware and therefore need to be treated a person? And why would we need to call a machine that falls within such a category but clearly isn't self-aware or intelligent, 
why we should we call such a machine a person? And on the flip side of this, we also have this problem then, if we cannot simply distinguish by saying it is a human being and therefore it's a person, by what right are we excluding from the term person such beings as great apes, dolphins, whales and even some various uh, octopus um, species? I can't see of a good re I can't think of a good reason why we shouldn't throw that net a little bit wider. But the biggest problem that we're going to face there is that a term such as person is a dichotomous term. Legally, because it is really a legal term, it thinking of something as a person will determine what right that something has, what rights it has, what obligations it has, what legal protection it deserves, and so on. And now we are going to find ourselves faced with the uncomfortable fact that reality simply isn't dichotomous. Reality can simply not be this, simply be separated into person and not person all the time. This is going to be a huge problem in the not too distant future. And maybe the only way out of it, maybe, is to adopt a pragmatic approach that is dependent on the circumstances. So for example, within a human society, we, we might have certain basic criteria such as like for example intelligence and self-awareness and so on that would qualify something to be called a person but after that we might have to look at each individual society group of people or local situation of any description and then on that local situation apply categorizations that will allow us to determine things such as human beings that have the potential to be intelligent and self-aware and then apply our label of person. But obviously that is then something that's going to vary from region to region, from situation to situation and so on and so forth. It was a very simple question. What is it that determines that something is a person? But man, if you try to answer it, you'll end up opening one can of worms after the other. Isn't reality fun?